Right, it looks like it's recording. Right, hi everyone, Lee Ashby here from uh, Motocross and Speedway uh, Memories. Good to see you all, got a great interview for you this evening. I just want to make a thank you first, big thanks to Simon Pardo for his support from White Eagle Finance. Uh, they do quality financial advice for pensions, investments, mortgages and protection. And the website is whiteeaglefinance.co.uk. So thanks to him. Right, to my interview, absolute peach of an interview for you this evening. I've got no other than former world champion and British speedway legend, Mr. Gary Havelock. How's it going, Gary? I'm good, Lee. Thank you very much. And yourself? Not too bad, thank you. Absolutely Excellent. awesome to meet you for starters. We've had a few yeah. chats and a few chats online well, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But, uh, awesome to actually speak to you. Absolute ledge. Right. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, I really appreciate it, mate, for your time. Right then, ready for the questions then? I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go. How did you get into Speedway and what is your earliest memory of the sport? Uh, I got into it through my, through my dad. Obviously, yeah. he, he was yeah. an ex-rider. Um, my earliest memory of the sports, that's a mm. really good, that's a really, really good question. I think it would mm. probably be uh, Scun, uh, Scun, oh, shit. Sunderland oh, yeah. in about 1974, something like that. That, that would have been made me, what, about five or six? Yeah. I think that was my earliest, but my earliest memory of motorbikes yeah. is uh, seeing the 25cc Italia. That uh, my dad, yeah. had, dad had bought me when I was three years old. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I just remember it uh, stood gleaming in, the, in my mum and dad's hallway. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, man. Yeah, oh, my God, yeah. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> yeah, so, my, yeah, dad was... up, my dad ended up making me one of them as well with a little Did silver really? disc in the back as well. Fantastic, yeah. yeah. Awesome, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, it was a wicked little bike. I had some, mm. uh, my mum's got some pictures of me on it, I think. Me oh. farewell me in the pool, I had a couple, uh, at least one in there. Yeah, uh, yeah a little three-year-old ran along. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, because uh, didn't you do the grass track as well, didn't you? I did, yeah, I did. What well, a lot of the lads of, uh, <coughs> of my era did. Uh, mm. We came up through, through the junior grass track scene. Obviously, yeah. there, there was no such thing as a junior speedway scene back yeah. then. Yeah. And um, the only really way you got into, uh, you know, flat oval racing was, was on the grass. Um I do remember uh, Lancashire Grass Track Club. The highlight of the year, of year was they had a they had run one meeting on the old Bellevue on Hyde Road, oh. and that was just like after riding in stubble fields and shit like that. It was yeah, just yeah. get on Bellevue. It was like a billion table, and it was just yeah. just blew our mind. It was just this is so easy. <laughs> so, so that was the old Collins and Morton day. That it was. It would have been. Yeah, yeah. it would have yeah, been. Yeah. And um, yeah, so we I started racing. Junior grass, I think I was eight. So obviously, from getting the first bike at three up until eight, um, I'd just been going around the tracks with my dad, and yeah. you know, if we could get on before the meeting or at the interval afterwards, so, yeah. I'd get a few laps. And um, yeah, I think I started racing about eight, and then raced right through to uh, fourteen. Uh, won a couple of British championships, and then um, moving into my fifteenth year, I was like. I don't really want to go on to the two. I'd got to the two hundred class, and I didn't really want to go on the two fifty class. You know, what I wanted to do was get a speedway bike. Because uh, <laughs> when, when I was fourteen, I remember getting on my dad's old um, double overhead Cam Jawa. You know, I remember the yeah. big beasts. Yeah, yeah. Got on that at um, Long Eaton. Oh, First right. time I'd ever been on the five hundred. I got out the pit gate, towed around over the start finishing line. Toodled into turns one and two, come out of two. I thought, right, here we go, give it a big handful and just, wow! <laughs> just bl blew my mind there and then, yeah. So that was like, nah, I'm not riding 250s, dad. I want to get a speeder bike. So uh, we built up a, a bike from all bits and that, you know, with uh, Wesley. And um, my 15th year, I basically just went around um, wherever I could get a ride, you know. And yeah. um, when. My birthday is actually in November, 4th of November, so just after the end of the season. So what my dad done in, um, it would have been August of 1984, yeah. he applied for my license, putting down my date of birth as the 4th of September, 1968, <laughs> instead of the 4th of November, right? 
yeah. and the idiots gave me a license. So I, uh, <laughs> I wrote, I wrote, I wrote the last two months of the season in 1984 illegally as a 15 wow. year old. That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I actually won the um, Suffolk Junior Open Championship in Millwall <laughs> when I was when I was when I was 15, and I shouldn't have even been run. So you took to it straight away then, and didn't uh, know from the grass. Oh God, no, straight away. I mean, you 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 yeah, ride yeah. you ride grass back then. You get on them. I mean, back then, speed tracks were speed tracks. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the people put in uh, a, a lot of pride in the in the presentation and the state of the track. And and coming from grass track, it was just like like riding billiard tables. It was amazing. That was good then. Mm. <laughs> no ruts. Excuse me. Uh, uh, the kind of style in the pint yeah, glass. Yeah, carry uh, on, mate. No yeah, problem yeah. at all. Yeah. We're, all re- we're all relaxed. Mm. <laughs> all right, then, next question I got for you then. Uh, yeah. What riders did you look up to and idolise when you were young and why? And did you ever get to race any of your heroes and idols, as it were? Uh, uh, yeah, yes and no. Um, okay. I never really had an out-and-out out hero, you know? Okay. Yeah. Some riders say, oh, three away, Tony McCarthy and Jeff Cooper, yeah, yeah. Know, Gary Ablock. Well, one person said that to me once, I think. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I like to I like to watch as much speed as I can. Obviously, back then, he was on um, World of Sport on Saturday afternoon. There was always yeah. like, speed on him. Yeah. In the Continental Finals, you know, I went yeah, to I went I went to Wembley in 78 and 81 because back then all the, all the riders in all the leagues got four tickets. For when, uh-huh. for when it was a Wembley final, so um, oh, excuse me, I um, yeah, we went in '78 when Ollie won, and then in '81 when Bruce won, and that was just oh, amazing, yeah. and just oh, fun, amazing. fabulous, yeah. And um, yeah. so I was like, um, you know, I, I I love Bruce and the Americans, you know, the way they raced and, and the flamboyancy and that, you know, yeah. obviously, yeah, uh, you, you, you can probably tell from some of the photos behind you that I was slightly flamboyant, and um. <laughs> yeah. um Good yeah, you know, I, I, I like to, you know, PC, Michael Lee. Michael Lee was amazing. Um, you know, lots of different rides, I think, really. But I, I, I decided from an early age that I wasn't going to try and be anybody in particular. I was going to try and be me, you know. And uh, I think I think I managed that. <laughs> yeah. uh, as to racing some of them, I never got, never ever raced Bruce. Um, yeah. Obviously, I raced uh, against and with people like the Moran brothers and them. Um, yeah. John Cook, uh, Bobby, Bobby Schwartz, people like that, um, 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 and yeah, I don't, I never raced against Michael Lee. Um, actually, I don't think I ever. No, I did. I raced against Bobby in Australia once. Yeah, when he was right at the end of his career. But um, I remember once early on in my career at Bradford and uh, Chris Martin come over morning that I'd run him up the fence coming out of turn two, and like before I even got anywhere near me, my dad was over there and told me to. F off, in, <laughs> yeah. no, in no uncertain terms. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't approach him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, no, like I say, I, I, I had, a, I had a few riders that uh, you know I love to watch, uh, and I still do. And mm. um, you know, I just try to try to be myself. Who do you like actually watching now? Who actually excites you watching Speedway now? Okay, uh, let's uh, right, <laughs> that's let's a random, random one there. Right, random. right from the top, right to the, right down low. Yeah, go on. You know. Yep. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, in the JPs now, um, um, I love watching Emo. I love watching uh, Bartosz Marslik. Um, you know, the stuff that some of these young guys do now is like, mm-hmm. I actually seriously doubt whether I could have done it, you know. Um, the way they ram themselves into the fence down the straight to fire themselves into the corner. Back in our day, it was like getting into the corner was, was the important bit. That's mm-hmm. set you up for the rest of the corner. I mean, you know what I mean? You were go, you were going in fast enough as it was without ramming yeah. the, the air fence and getting an extra yeah. five mile an hour spurt. Yeah, using it as a berm. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, I like watching that. You know, even even right down the lower leagues, there's people like you know uh, uh, Ben Barker and Jason Gary. You know, yeah. who, who I'd probably still pay money to go watch because you know some of yeah, that is going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, you know, I think it's a shame because them. Um, you watch now. You watch the Polish league, and like like a junior, you can hop off a start and win a race because like they're all are all riding really expensive rocket ship engines, and um, I think uh, a, a bit a bit of the skill has gone out of it. But uh, certainly at the top level, you know, there's still yeah. them boys are a uh, uh, different class. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, next one I got for you. Who were the toughest riders to compete with in the British league racing days, and why? 
quite a few um, of them. <laughs> oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say um, at the height of my career, yeah, my toughest opponent was Per Johnson. Yeah. Um, the way he rode the bike for a tall guy as as well mm. was just just different gravy, you know. Um, and if you look the year when I won the world championship, me and him were literally head and shoulders above everybody that year. People say, oh, it was easier in them days. He won off world final and that. But I, I, honestly, you can't on how think that if it had, even if it had been GP in 92, it would have only been either me or her that would have won it. Yeah. Because you look through all the rounds and that. Um, we yeah. were we were at the top there, yeah. all, all the time. And um, yeah. yeah, and it was it's really strange because I didn't really know Per when we were... When we were um, Rivals, you know, you, the old like walk along in the pits, nod, like, how you doing, mate? Yeah, 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 like, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. Knows, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't really know him, and, and I didn't yeah. actually really get to know her until after yeah. he got injured. And, um, you know, we 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 uh, we spoke a lot back in the day, and then it was one year, it's probably about 2004, I was riding for a team in Stockholm, yeah. and he was team manager, and so that was nice, but uh. God, there's so many others, you know. Um, all the English lads, you know, Screeny, Lauren. Um, Sam was always a fearsome competitor, competitor you know. Um, yeah, the, off the top of my head, it's difficult to, to <laughs> name them all, you know. But, uh, yeah, yeah, too many. Yeah, yeah. Yep, spot on then. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm actually going to be speaking to Per as well, so you'll have to. Oh, fantastic! That yeah, well, give yeah. him a, give him my best wishes. I will do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And also, I've done one uh, of Bruce Penn already as well. So if you oh, get a chance, fantastic. Have a look at that. So if you oh, get a chance, we'll do. Yeah, I'll send we'll it to you. I'll send it to you. Yeah. I'll send it to you, mate. Brilliant. All right. All right. Cool. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm one of them people who literally needs a link sent so I can just go. Yeah, down. that's what I'll send you. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. If I have to go and find it, I'm, yeah, you're yeah, you're gone. Yeah. 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 I'll send you the link for that one. You can. Cheers, Lee. All right. No problems. Right. Next one we got. Uh, was there a certain bike or engine that you rode over the years that was a bit of a favourite? And if so, can you remember the year or the years that was and why that was? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. No. no? No, um, I mean, the engine I won the world final on got nicked yeah. out, out of Neil Levitt's workshop, was it? Yeah, and he denied all knowledge of it being nicked. So, <laughs> so, like, trying to blame um, Paul Bentley was going down there, and I said to him, Can you take three engines down for us? And he was like, Yeah, yeah. And then when I spoke to Neil a couple of weeks later, I was him, How you get that one of them engines? He said, Oh, well, one's done, and the other, the other one will be ready next week. And I'm like, What do you mean, the other one? He said, What about the other one? He said, What other one? He said, I said, Three. No, he didn't know he said two. Anyway, long story. Um, yeah, apparently someone nicked it out of his workshop and he did that, that. And that's when me and him fell out, like, big time. And uh, oh, didn't yeah. actually speak to him, right, yeah. from about nine. It would have been about 93. Yeah. Until Cardiff, about two years ago, bumped into him in the pub. Oh, yeah, exactly. And he come over and I just thought, you know what? Fucking hell. Let's bury it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we had a chat and then and then it was it was all good, you know. Hatred's a, it's it's yeah. not a very nice not a very nice thing, man. It can consume um, you. Yeah. I've actually spoken to him recently and asked him. Okay. About, he's gonna yeah. do one as well, so that'd be interesting. Oh, fantastic, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be a cool yeah. one from the past as well. Yeah, well I mean obviously when you know, the height of my the height of my, my uh, prowess, should we say, uh, mm-hmm. certainly the early stage of my career. Mm-hmm. Um, Neil was a big part of it, you know. He, he, yeah. he, he um, you know, I bought, bought the engines off uh, Lanty or the Lanty Hammer, and um, he built them, and then Neil just serviced them for me in England, and uh, we had a we had a really good working relationship, you know. So um, yeah, that's right. one. Next one I got for you. What were your favourite tracks? In the British League and why? Okay, Bradford. Yeah, <laughs> makes sense. Because it was, it was. Well, I, I don't know. It was just the perfect track, you know. It was my favourite track in the whole of the world, and um, I sh- almost shed a tear there when it closed down. Like you know, it was. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. It was. The bends were in a perfect proportion for mm. the straights. You know, you get some tracks where. The straights are too short and the bends are too big and it rides like a circle. Vice mm. versa, you get the straights are too long and you've got to turn 180 degrees and go back the way you've just come. <laughs> um, well, as Bradford, it just it was just the perfect dimensions. It was mm. also very wide, which mm. you ask any speed rider, you know they like wide tracks, um, mm. uh, and it was also very banked, 
Um, yeah, yeah. And I guess people who, who hadn't actually been right down to the track probably don't realise how banked it was. Yeah. Um, turn one and two was banked up quite a bit, but like most tracks that have banked in, the last sort of metre and a half, two metres, cambers it's off, doesn't it? Cambers yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the three turns three and four at Bradford, it was literally banked right to the bottom of the fence. So you could you could rail it round, you could ride two inches from the fence um, and it would hold you up. Yeah. I mean, Charles Wilson actually used, got into a competition and seen how short we could have our bars so that when the way riders thought they were riding the edge of the dirt, you could still go around them. And <laughs> <laughs> we had a competition, we got ridiculous. I think I'm going, yeah, I think I had two inches off each end of the handlebars. <laughs> just, for, shit, just, shit himself, you come just, for, just for Bradford, like, because if you tried tried using them around Wolverhampton, like, you just end up fucking going through the fence. Yeah. <laughs> you need a bit of leverage there. Yeah. I never got to go there as a youngster and watch it, but obviously I seen it on the TV and I yeah, saw the, yeah. the final where well, well, and... I Yeah, I'll tell you how banked it was, right? If mm. you stood, you stood on the curb in the middle yeah. of turn three and four, yeah. the bottom of the kick, the bottom of the kickboard was about three foot above your head. Oh, yeah. So it was proper bold. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah. Cool, I see some great passes. Best track, there. best best changing rooms, best pits. Just The only problem was it was such a big cavern of space that mm. for Speedway, only getting a 1,000 or 1,500 people in there, the place looked dead every mm. time. And that was that was a sad thing, you know. If Speedway, that would have been such a good place to Speedway in its heyday when they were getting 10, 15, 20,000 people, you know. Yeah. So, it's did speak a little bit off air before we started recording about the fact whether it could ever come back and stuff, but you've sort mm. of mentioned there's some other stuff going on there. That... Uh, there is. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Well, I know when we were there, the, the, the rugby never wanted us there. We were like hassle. We were like, you know, yeah. noisy neighbours, whatever. Yeah. And what happened was when uh, Alan Am did that, oh, we've got to shut down for two years while they redeveloped the stadium. Bullshit, right? Um, he knew what was going to happen, and the council ended up selling the stadium to the Bulls for a pound. Jesus Christ. They then went bust, and the uh, rugby equivalent of the BSPA bought the stadium. So it's a, it's the rugby equivalent of the BSPA who, who own Otto Stadium now. Oh, right. And um, obviously, they're going to want it to be a multi purpose stadium. You know, any yeah. stadium in this day and age needs to be multi purpose, doesn't it? Uh, and yeah, um, sure. So uh, it's difficult to know because without spending an awful lot of money, I don't think you could get the track ready, you know. Yeah. But uh, maybe people who know more than I do and better than I do are uh, no different. So well, fingers crossed it would be amazing, but mm, I can't like, see it myself. Like, no, I can't see it. No. no. What other? Uh, did you have any favourite other tracks in Europe that you liked as well? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Lots and lots and lots. You know, uh, most of the tracks in Poland. Most of the tracks in Sweden, you know, I, I, obviously 10 years at Bradford, I was a... Uh, having said that, though, our well, first two seasons were at the old Middlesbrough, and that was like a tight, tight, sort of a little... A little bit like Oxford, sort of oh, yeah, yeah, shape right, and size. Yeah. So yeah. you had to turn it, like. But uh, mm. then I went to Brad when when we decided to go to the Elite League, we decided that all of the big meetings were all on big, fast European tracks, you know, World Finals and stuff like that, so... Uh, better have one of them for my home track and learn to ride it well and um, that's what I did obviously 10 years at Bradford um, and it is a completely different technique in Speedway to ride a big track fast than it is to ride a small track fast mm-hmm. and um, you know it's if you can get technically correct on a big track which was obviously back then where all the big meetings were um you know, you were going to go all right. So that's what I did. And I, 10 years of bouncing off the fence down the street to Bradford um, just made me just prefer the big fast tracks, you know. Um, so, yeah, like most of the ones in Poland, obviously, Wrocław has a very special place yeah. in my heart. Um, but Poland in general, you know, I won the under 21s at Zelona Gora. And then I won the, the big one at Wrocław. So, um, yeah, all good. Um, most of the yeah. tracks in Sweden are, are really good as well. So, Great memories. All right, cool. Uh, what track did you not like racing in the British uh, League and why? <laughs> and why? Oh, dear. Um, Don't say Swindon. 
No, I didn't mind Swindon. I won yeah, the I you might like that. I won the league. Why did that? Didn't I? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that, that I was there. When it, when, yeah, when it was one big league, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I we was had, there. Yeah, had, I think it was like four heats each, and then it was straight to a four-man final. Yeah, I remember because I had third pick, right? And it was um, uh, Crumpy had first pick, Lee Adams had second pick, and I had third pick. And we, we did the old. Uh, GP walk out to the start line. Yeah, yeah. And I, I went and had a quick look and I just said, Scott, I mean, I just said, uh, Four's winning this, like. And, uh, and I said, Third pick, we got Bob up. And uh, Crumpy goes, I'll have one. Lee Adams going, kicks gate four, right? And it's soft and deep. And yeah, oh, yeah. gate three is like concrete, right? Lee Adams walks up, picks up gate three. Did he? I just looked at Scott and I said, <laughs> <laughs> in the bank, so went off Gate Four, won it. it see you later. <laughs> so yeah, that was. Um, but um, basically, just the, the small, tight, technical t- tracks. You know, yeah. uh, I didn't particularly. You know, although I had good results uh, uh, over the years on them, uh, various different tracks. I didn't particularly enjoy riding them. You know, uh, I liked going fast. I liked having my wheels in line, going fast, like by the fence. Uh, but um, you know, obviously back in them days, you were looking at um, the the well, I say the old Bellevue, the middle Bellevue. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, a place yeah. like Eastbourne, Lakeside, yeah. places like that. You know, I'd, you know, I'd, I could do all right on them tracks, but I, I, like I say, I didn't particularly enjoy it. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, did you have any special set of uh, special favourite levers or Kevlar's or you wore during your racing days that you liked or? Got some tasty not, ones in the background. Oh, I have not really. Mm-hmm. I don't think, but uh-huh. um, obviously, obviously, the Kevlar suit I wore when I won the world final, being the first mm-hmm. speed rider to ever wear a Kevlar suit, um, was was nice. Still got that mm-hmm. one, or even though I let it, I let it to Sean Wilson to go to Australia with because he was oh. like, "Have he kind of is that?" Because like spoiling in Australia, and like, and I'm going, "Mate, right, okay, but you know, I won the world final, and you don't you?" Yeah, yeah, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the poor bastard broke his fucking back, didn't he, in Newcastle, right? Oh, and he's God. screaming at the thing, he's, don't cut the fucking suit off, yeah. whatever you do! Don't yeah, cut yeah. the suit! And he made them pump him full of morphine so they could take the suit off him rather than cut it off him. <laughs> Bless, Ble- him. Bless him, yeah. Fair <laughs> play to him. Yeah, so you imagine, I was cutting off. Yeah, <laughs> that's know. a good one. Um, um, What have I got left? I've got the, uh, the snow camouflage one I did. I've oh, got that yeah. one left. Um, and I've got all my England suits. Um, yeah. You know, to oh. me, that was... Uh, I, I'd see people around. I'd see, like, second half was tra- riding in a fucking tattered old fucking, I don't know, Martin Duggard England suit or something. And I think, oh, my God. <laughs> you've sold that for, like, 200 quid or something. Like, what the... WTF? Yeah, it's yeah. It's an England suit. Yeah, yeah. The only wow. England suit I haven't got is the one which... Um, I got sponsored for 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 the final at Pool. Oh yeah, when Hans Hansen sold us out, um, and the deal with the sponsor was uh, <laughs> you're laughing at you. you know, I mean, I don't, I've I, got I, a question I, for that later, so like we'll get into that. Tell it <laughs> okay. like it is. Yeah, but, um, do that, do that, do the, that. Yeah. The sponsor who sponsored me sponsored me for that one meeting, basically uh, quite yeah. a bit of money. So he said, "Well, okay. on condition I can have the suit," and I was like, "Yeah, okay." Then. So I've got all the other England suits. I've got me. The first Kevlar's, the, the bottom corner one down there, the yellowy Kevlar's. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I've got the um, the snow camouflage Kevlar suit. Um, I might, I'm not even sure if I have another one, but uh, for me, it was the body body colours. When I started at 16, I thought, yeah. I should really collect something because like, yeah. if I don't end up being anything, at least I'll have something to show for it. Like, so yeah. I decided to collect caps and body colours. Oh, Okay. Yeah, the caps were going really good, but then over the years, like we had next up to go fishing, and like they've, <laughs> they've dwindled and that. But yeah. my body colours are quite proud. I think uh, I put them in probably about two years ago. I got them from all the various places where they were. Yeah. Put them all in them, you know, them bags that you stuck out the air with the Hoover to yeah, keep yeah. them. I put them all in them. I think I've got ninety-one. Yeah. Something That's like that. Cool. Pretty much every one I ever had on my body, I kept. Even like back in the day, the British finals and Commonwealth yeah, finals and that, yeah, you got you yeah. got given your your race jacket and it was like, right, if you don't hand your race jacket in at the end, it's a fifty pound fine. And I'd say, well, it's a fifty pound fine then, because I'm telling you I'm right now, I'm it. fucking, I'm, I'm taking it. <laughs> yeah, so I, yeah, pretty much every meeting oh, I ever yeah. rode in, I, I kept the race jacket. 
Mm. Sounds like we need to do a video another time, a Skype thing with your phone or something. You have to show yeah. us some mem memorabilia. Yeah, definitely. I'll do that. The race, race jackets and leathers. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. All right, we'll sort that out another time. Um, next one I got. Did you have any superstitions or anything that you had specifically on race days or anything like that? No, not really. Not really. Uh... I think everybody's got a little tiny bit of superstition to a point, but you know, yeah. it was never, yeah. it was never, it was never to a point where it was going to change the decisions I made or anything like that. You know what I mean? It's just like stuff. Like uh, I'd have like, I usually have at least two, if not three, clean pairs of goggles all made up before the meeting. Yeah. And like, if I, if I won my first race, then I'd just wear them goggles again. And like, if I didn't. It'd be all dirty up. anyway, so I'd like grab the next clean set and then. Yeah, yeah. So like, if you got an accident, obviously you 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 kept the same set all night. So um, <laughs> that was about it, really. Nothing, nothing, nothing major. major. No. Fair enough. Uh, next one I got for you. Did you have any injuries in your career? That you, <laughs> fa <laughs> that you felt any injuries? That, yeah. Did you have any injuries? As into the point you feel that it held you back from achieving more in the sport at some point or another. And if so, uh, uh, without yeah. a shadow of a doubt, yeah, yeah. Without, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, yeah. uh, the first time when I done my back at Paul mm -hmm. in um, 96, I think it would have been, yeah, 96. Um, then um, I didn't basically, I think I did it in about um, June or something like that, and um, I basically didn't, didn't ride again till the next season. And um, what I decided to do was um, not even bother chasing foreign uh, contracts or anything like that. I, was, I just decided I was going to have a, just to see the rider for Bradford, ease myself back in and uh, make sure I stay on the bike, you know. Mm. So certainly um, that 97 season, uh, which funnily enough, we, we ended up winning the league at Bradford and um, <laughs> it turned out to be really good. But um, yeah, and... You know, I, I'm a big believer in, in there's only a couple of things that are going to slow you down in Speedway. Like, uh, one of them's getting involved with the wrong woman, and the other, <laughs> one's, and the other one's hospital food. Um, and if you, if you can uh, steer away from the combination of doors, yeah. um, you know, you things like Hans Nielsen, I think all he, all he ever did was, like, broke a collarbone, broke one collarbone. Yeah. That was it, and then you, I think he said that in his interview as well. Right, okay, there you go. I can't believe that I even remember that. Yeah, you know, yeah, but, it was true. Uh, yeah, he said he yeah, didn't really uh, have any. Uh, yeah. And then you look at you look at the like some myself and, and people oh. like Mark Lorem, you know. Yeah, yeah. It was just just unlucky. You just end up being in the wrong place at the wrong time, yeah, and yeah. both. Um, so yeah, without a shadow without hospital food slows you down. Um, you know, unless you uh, um, have no brain whatsoever, I guess, but. If you've got no brain, you ain't making it to the top, are you? <laughs> That's it, mate. Right, okay, next one i got for you. Uh, what riders were your favourite to team ride with and why? Okay. Mm. <laughs> There's a couple of good ones there, actually. Yeah? Um, yeah. I loved riding with Andrew Silver uh, for England oh, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the one we had a test match at Eastbourne, yeah. and uh, we ended up with two and four. So it was like, Per was off one. I was off two, you know, like Eastbourne, yeah. gate one, certainly in heat one, it's just such a massive advantage. Yeah, and yeah. Andrew was off four, and Andrew was going, you're going to have to trap him and clamp him. I was going, yeah, right. Oh. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. I, I, did, I did manage to trap him, and there's a picture somewhere, and I've got it lent over per, like with the gas off, and yeah. I'm looking over my shoulder like that, and Andrew's yeah. like, coming around the outside, and we actually did, we have got 5-1. Um, that was really nice to with Andrew. Um, Obviously, uh, with Bradford and that, I, I did a lot of riding with um, Sean Wilson. Sean Wilson yeah. um, you know, I was one and two. <laughs> Actually, funny enough, like, we'd go to Bradford and he'd be out, we'd be out the track and he'd be kicking out and gate four and he'd go, ah, oh, before looks good. You're going to have to pick two and four if we win the toss, right? So if, even if I won the toss, I'd have to pick two and four just for Sean and I'd have to try and make a demon of a gate to get over <laughs> whoever the number one was. Yeah. So, um, but I'd say I'd, I'd have to say probably my favourite of all time was uh, riding with Peter Carr in um, oh. in Australia. Yeah, in Australia, in we were, I believe, uh, touring thing. The last official England Lions touring team that went over there in the winter of um, let me think, it would have been eighty-five. 
uh, eight, 87, 88. And we rode seven test matches and we, I believe we beat them 5-2. And it should have been 6-1 because they cheated in the first one. Um, and yeah, I was partnered with Peter Carter the, the whole the whole trip, and uh, we had a we had we, we had a we had an understanding. And basically, if we if we weren't first and second, and one of their guys was winning, I would just let him let him get. If I was in, if I was second, and he was third. I'd move out, let him go into second, and I'd just sit on his back wheel because guaranteed before the end of the four laps, he built up a lot of speed and dive bombed somebody. And he would dive bomb them and just shut off and just take them right to the fence and I'd nibble the inside. Thank you very much. Yeah, we got so many five ones. It was ridiculous. It really was. So, uh, so yeah, yeah. I think I'd have to say pretty uh, care. Just because well. of that, just because the whole trip was just magic. You know, we were a lot of lot of young lads on the other side of the world. You know, representing yeah, our amazing. country. That was amazing. Uh, yeah, mega. Awesome. Uh, next one I got. This this would be interesting. Yeah. Uh, what British tr- uh, tracks? What's the worst and best changing rooms? <laughs> I think I know the best. You've already mentioned Bradford. I think everyone's mentioned Bradford in their best ones. Have they really? Yeah. Wow, there you go. Because of the rugby lot, club really? and all that, yeah, I suppose that yeah. was quite it smart. Says a lot. It says a lot. The, the worst, worst. though. <laughs> There's a few I'll of them. I'll tell you a lot. There is a few. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. I don't even know. Scunthorpe's a pretty friggin'. Pretty amateurish, like <laughs> yeah. you basically you were all in one big room, no yeah. chairs or anything to sit down in. 14 mm-hmm. riders all in one big room with a sink and like I think two showers, like them shitty electric showers that like you have to run around in to get wet. <laughs> um, yeah, they were pretty shit. Out, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm trying to think. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Peterborough didn't even have really changing rooms, you know, no. until a couple of years ago. No? You had to go, like, you had to go get in your van and drive off somewhere else on the, in the in the showground where they'd have, like, a, a shower block open for you. It was, like, a different one every time you went to Peterborough. It was like, oh, this shower's over there now. So, basically, after the meeting, you had to wait, you, you loaded the van up, and then you just, like, stand, it, stand in the door well, holding the door, covered in shit, so you didn't get the van there to drive to the changing rooms. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Not good then. Nah. Oh, no, not good. Okay, I got. Uh, what was your most memorable race or meeting, and why does it still stick in your memory even to the, today? Well, obviously, my most memorable meeting is the uh, off when I when yeah. I won. When I won. Um, mm-hmm. As for individual races, um, mm-hmm. it's a re- really good question. There's been some yeah. crackers. I think um, everybody used. Uh, Ever done a got lost in YouTube for a two hours watching speed racing? Yeah. Would have seen my race against Martin Ren Power in the in the yes. World Cup and pole in yes. two thousand and was it two or four? I can't remember what year it was. Anyway, just a, just a couple of passes. <laughs> yeah, I think I counted seventeen, something like yeah, that. With know. with the with the, right, from the start of the race to the end. Yeah, yeah. And I, I actually over about the next four or five years, I actually had at least three. Like fans who come up to me and said they've been going watching Speed Race for 40, 50, 60 years, and that's yeah, the best yeah. race I've ever seen. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that, that's a cracker. Obviously, yeah, I had an yeah. absolute belt with Zorro at Somerset in at 8.13 one night for Redka. And uh, when I go back, every time I go back to Somerset, people say, I don't know if you've got voted or people just say it's the best race that ever on Somerset. That was another one we knocked you out of each other, four laps passing each other, and that. He beat me, the bastard. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, so probably some of the best races I ever had weren't even for first. Like I was second, yeah. you know. But uh, yeah. I just saw so many. Like I don't know yeah. off the top of my head. Like they're probably um, two crackers. That you mentioned. Also, actually, oh. I never thought, the 1986 Grand Slam at Arena Essex before it had the fence when it just had the little rubber tube sticking up out the floor. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, it was. It was, I don't know if it was the top three from each club, and there was 20 odd uh, uh, heats. I think each rider got like three qualifying heats. Then there was two eight man, eight lap semi finals, and then there was an eight man, ten lap final. Well, in my semi final, I was last coming out of turn two, and within about three laps, I was first. 
past all seven of them. Uh, I, I, I've been looking everywhere. I can't find it on YouTube. Can't find it in my life. But yeah, oh, wow, yeah. that'd have to be up there. Eighth to eighth to first in about three laps. <laughs> Madness. Yeah. Did you ever? Did you ever roast that? I, I, I did see some old footage uh, on YouTube of the uh, was it sixteen lapper at uh, Ipswich I used to do. Uh, they still do. Never, right? did that. never did it. I have done a sixteen yeah. lapper. I've done oh, a yeah. sixteen lapper on that tour that I'm talking about. In oh, was it? Because we did all them test matches, but then yeah, we did yeah. a few few open meetings and stuff in between. Mm. And there was a 16 lap at a place called Liverpool, which was uh, similar to Lakeside when it first came out, as in a car track on the outside, mm. speed of track on the centre. Yeah. And it, instead of having a fence, it just had little rubber things coming out the ground for, like, to mark out the the outside, if, if you like. Yeah. And um, I, was, I was in a 16 lap there, Billy Sanders Memorial, and I won it. But I made the start because I top scored, so I had gate, I had gate one on the front grid. I made the start and rode sixteen laps on me Jack Jones. It was the most Jesus shit. Like every time I was coming out of turn five, I was like, it's got to be yellow and black this time, surely. Like, no, <laughs> was there any tyre left? No, no tyre left. But I, I actually <laughs> remember got to the stage where I seen people go as I was coming out of turn four, seeing them going into turn one. <laughs> I was like Jesus nearly God. lapping them sixteen laps again. Madness, madness, isn't it? Road, 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 road 111. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, often safety gone mad now. You can't do two things like that. Oh, you can't do anything, can you? <laughs> no. All um, right, next, all right, next one I got. Who were your closest friends during your Speedway career? And yep. how easy was it to block out that friendship once the tape went up? Uh, once the tapes went up? Um, Oh, probably just all the England lads, you know, over the years, probably different ones. I've, I've always been really close to Sean Wilson. Obviously, uh, he went into the engine uh, engine um, tuning business and uh, he looked after my stuff for the, the last five or six years of, of my career. Um, I'm still good friends with him. Joe Screen, obviously, I'm still good friends with him. Um, all the England lads, you know, Matt Lorem, you, you know, God bless his soul, the late, great Lee Richardson, um, Floppy, Dino, you know. Um, yeah. Um, Andy Silva. Andrew Silva, yeah, bless his... Yeah, yeah. I, do you know what? It's a really funny thing because when I started, I used to, like, read the Speed of, you know, Speed of Star was the only, only yeah. time you could get same. any information. Yeah, yeah. same, yeah. And uh, especially the, uh, the, the, the score charts in the back. Yeah, um, you know, yeah, really religiously. Yeah. Like, mm. so for my first year, I would keep seeing this fucking flash blonde haired cockney lad, like doing yeah. really well and all that. Right? And I thought oh, he looks like an asshole. And, uh, <laughs> like, it wasn't until it wasn't until um, the winter of 1986. I was in Australia. I wasn't on the tour. There was a Bukok tour. It wasn't like a, a Lions one. It was just a, where they went around. And Andrew was on that. Um, and. Oh, the late great um, Darren Bucock, bless him, he, he organised for me to go and stay out with a family in Adelaide okay. so I could ride some meetings. And uh, I, uh, he put me, he got me hooked up with uh, Shane Bowles, his family. Remember Shane oh, Bowles? Shane Bowles, yeah, Shane Bowles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I went over there just to, just to be in Adelaide for a couple of months and, and ride locally. Um, and Andrew was on the on the Bucock tour. But when I got there, they happened to be in Adelaide. And um, cut a really long story short, he was... Um, he was um, he was staying with a lad called Tracy Bray. How bad is that? A guy called Tracy, right? <laughs> and he, had, he, he Andrew had his U, which is a if anybody doesn't know, is a pickup truck. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, long, I got talking to Andrew, and like we literally spent about three days together, like in this U, and like never took it back. And like <laughs> the funniest thing was, the very funniest thing was my girlfriend at the time who went, went up on to be my missus. Mm. She because it was. No mobiles well back then, so like you have to ring the house, you know, where the people were staying. And and if I wanted to ring England, I would have to ask to use the phone and, and time it, and then pay them the money. And stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she uh, she she rang up to the boys' family where I was staying, and they said, "I'll go you there." Uh, and and Shane's mum had said, "Oh no, no, he's not. He, he he's over at Tracy's." Oh no! <laughs> and then that was it. <laughs> Using the shit then. Mate, it wasn't until about 15 years later, right, when she was with me at Oxford and Tracy Bear was over for something and I actually introduced him 
uh, that was only then that she actually seriously believed that believe there was a, it, yeah. a man, a man called Tracy. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> Great story, that. That's brilliant. But yeah, no, and and um, you know, the the funniest thing was that like when me and Andrew got together, it was like you know I I was in the Spanish style, man. You know, I I thought you were a wanker. <laughs> and he went, you know what? I, I thought you were, as well. <laughs> and That's it's just goes, it just goes to show you, yeah. you read, you see what you read in the papers and that, and you, yeah. you form an opinion, and it's completely different to what it is. Okay. And I mean, I've had I've had, uh, had Andrew up, up up my house for Christmas uh, yeah. before, you know, so. Yeah, that's how close we are, and um, we we don't think as much as we used to, but um, you know, we're still tight. I tried because obviously he was a bit of a hero of mine being at Swindon. Um, yes, yes. I was growing up. I, I remember. Yeah, I've got to tell you a story. That year, oh, yeah, banned, yeah. that year I was banned in 1989. I, um, yeah, yeah. I spent quite a bit of time with Andrew, and yeah. I used to go to Swindon with him, right? And he'd yeah. do a race, and he'd come in, and Lennon would be there, and he'd unscrew the lid, and he'd go, Andrew, you're not riding it hard enough. You're not using a fucking myth, no. <laughs> <laughs> and Andrew would be going, Dad, F off, aren't we great? And like, I'll be just like, oh my god! <laughs> Jesus, a bit haywire. Andrew and Len battling it out. But, they, were, uh, yeah. they were like that all the time, weren't they? They were, yeah, they were. Uh, I've seen a lot of father and sons like that. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> an yeah. awful lot. Yeah, yeah, same as that. Uh, most, 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 most times, father and sons don't work. Simple as that. Ah, there's, o- there's only the odd ones that, which mm. are the exception to the rule where it does work. You know. Mm. I think I remember as well once when Andrew was uh, climbed, he climbed the fence trying to get to a fan. I remember once when I was a kid. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was oh, he, 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 he certainly wasn't scared of swinging the forehead. That is for sure. No, he got, he I've, got, I've, he was getting I've, some I've, stick, I think, and then. Uh... I've, I've seen that forehead in action plenty of times. <laughs> I tell you, I'm like these are stories I couldn't possibly tell you on here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've, I've seen it. <laughs> sure. fair play, fair play. Yeah, he was, he was really entertaining though. Great rider. Yeah, he had, but his teammate was Ipswich, didn't he? Ricard Elsin. Oh, did he? Yeah, Ed but <laughs> him knocked him out. <laughs> <laughs> he must have run him wide or something. Well, he'd been partnered with Manny and Big Rick, like the rolling roadblock. He would trap every yeah. time and then just get yeah. in Andrew's way. And this niggle had gone on and on and on. And they got to Ipswich, and, and he, again, he was in his way. I think Andrew dive bombed him and nearly knocked him off, right? Like, and like Andrew got back in the pits, and like he could see him coming over, and he just, Andrew just stood up and bosh, oh, knock, knocked him spark out. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Got to love a story. No I. <laughs> right, next one I got for you. How important is it to have a mechanic you trust and knows you well? And what mechanics did you gel with best, and why? Uh, the best mechanic I gelled with was the only mechanic I had. Yeah, go on. You know, I had the same mechanic for 20, 20 years. Oh, right, okay, I didn't know that. Scott Trigg, um, his dad, Roy yeah. Trigg, used to ride for Cradley, um, Hackney, I believe, and back in the, uh, like, um, Pratty's era. Yeah. Um, and um, when we went to Australia on the tour, the one I was talking about, the official Lions one, um, the year before, Neil Evans, who was on the tour, with, he'd beat the New Zealand and stopped with Roy Roy Trigg and his family, and um, so when Neil turned up in Perth, like we all did for the start of the um, of the tour, he flew Scott over, who was sixteen at the time, to mechanic for him. Oh. So literally, Scott was mechanic for Neil for probably about two meetings, and then like me and Charmington nicked him, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and then, <laughs> yeah, literally nicked him, and then basically, yeah, uh, I sort of said to him, oh, you know. At the end of the tour, I was like, "Oh, you know, I'm I'm almost at the stage where I'm going to need a full time mechanic in England. You know, if you if you're interested." And he was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely interested." So I think it was about halfway through 1990. Yeah. Uh, and I called him up. I said, "If I was coming over," and he and he and he came over, and uh, we we were employer and employee. We were rider and mechanic. We were best mates for 20 years. We never had an argument. That's and. Um, you know, he was just a man. He just used to drive. He could drive just ridiculous amounts of of driving. You know, Lee, like, what well, it's like mm, that. Yeah, one of the, one of the main things of a modern speed rider is having good drivers. Yeah. And um, you know, unfortunately, in two, he actually ended up meeting a girl from where my mum and dad live in England. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, and um, they went. They decided in two thousand and eight. They decided before the kids got to school age, they were going to go and live in New Zealand. 
So obviously he went off to there. So from 2009, the last couple of years of my, my career, I had to have yeah. like different mechanics and that. But um, oh. it was never the same. They, they, they yeah. were good guys, the guys who helped me out and that. But yeah. it, it was never the same. You know, yeah. me and Scott, we were like brothers, you know. So that was special for your uh, world Scott fight, Trigg. You know? He was there at every, one, every single one of my meetings except for the under-21. Because that was uh, 1987, yeah. Uh, everything from 1990 onwards, everything I won, uh, he was there. Special relationship, then. Yeah, yeah. Good memories that one, then. Right, okay, and I think next... I think when I see a lot of modern riders, they have a different mechanic every year, and I think, yeah. oh, it's not good. It's not the it's not the way to be doing it, you know. That guy, you've got that guy, you got he's got your life in his hands, lining that back chain up, you know. Yeah. That's just my opinion. Got to have a lot of you know what? I think so. Um, next one I've got, this will be interesting. Do you have any regrets from your Speedway career? As in, uh, any meetings you feel you should have won or done better, or any teams that you rode for that you wish you hadn't, or any anything like that? Honestly, Lee, honestly, Lee, yeah. I can't. I really can't. Yeah? I'm a massive, massive believer in fate, and I'm a massive yeah. believer in, in um, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be, and think everything happens for a reason, and... Um, you know, there was dark, I had a lot of dark times in my career, especially early on. But um, I think if I hadn't had them, that I possibly wouldn't have ended up the person that I was. You know, because as you well know, Lee, uh, not just in Speedway but in life, you, you yeah. when the shit hits the fan, that's when you really find out who your friends, your friends are. Aren't they, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So, all the works of life. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, can you tell us a funny story from your wrestling <laughs> day memories? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can tell you loads of funny stories. <laughs> but I'm mm. going to have to tell you one of the best ones ever. Go on, this then. made the Sun newspaper, right? But oh. not, I'm not talking about the sport at the back. I'm talking about, about page eight or something, page five. Oh, yeah, right. Bloody hell. Go on. Dozy lad leave pal in Germany. Was the headline, right? Okay. Now I'll tell you the story, right? Yeah. Jesus. We went to do this meeting in, uh, where, where was it? Brockstead, northern Germany, up near Hamburg somewhere. And um, the money weren't great, as it wasn't for German League. So we, de- we decided to triple up. Yeah. So it was me and Andrew Silver and, and Glenn Doyle, the Aussie. Yeah. Um, yeah. um, Bradford, Bradford, uh, oh, it? sorry. Sorry. Me and Sh- we sort of quadrupled up. It was me, <laughs> Sean Wilson, Andrew yeah. Silver. Glenn Doyle, yeah? yeah, and um, we like Glenn, he's been a bit miserable the whole trip. And like, um, uh, when we left, oh, that was it. He got did he get through at the semi off or through at the final because he didn't have a mechanic. We had one mechanic between like four of us, basically, you know what I mean? And he was he was winning, I think he was winning his semi and he, and he ran out of fuel, so oh <laughs> he weren't happy. He weren't happy, happy, so like, yeah, as, as, we, as we left the um, as we left the stadium, we all loaded up and that. He went, Did I have to get on the bed? And we're like, Yeah, yeah, get on the bed. So he was on the bed, like, and you know how beds go on vans, don't you? Yeah. And especially if, you, if you're trebling up and there's bags everywhere and shit like that. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. we drove about, we drove about two hours, right? And then we pulled in for, for some food, okay? So, we all went in. Got some foes, sat down to eat it, right? I was finished sort of first early, right? And I, and I had the keys, and I said, uh, Hey, I Scott, lobbed him the keys. I said, uh, I'm going to the toilet. Uh, I'll see you at the van. So it's like, right, okay, then. So when I come out the toilet, obviously there's no one left inside. I walked out to the side. Mm-hmm. The van was running, right? Sean Wilson was in the driver's seat. Scott, Scott was on the on the free seat behind the drivers, so I just climbed into the passenger seat, and we sat on. Okay, now we drove for about another three hours, and then we stopped for fuel. Right, we stopped dead quick, stopped, filled up, paid, got back in the van, started driving. Right, so Scott still asleep on the bed, um, and Dolly still asleep. So he's got still asleep on the free seater. Dolly's asleep on the bed. We get seen to charge driving. I'm thinking. Anyway, it got quite late, like one o'clock in the morning or something. And Sean was riding the next because it was a Wednesday. Sean was riding on the Thursday night at Ipswich in a British semi final. Oh, so I said to him, mate, yeah, give me, I'll drive for a bit. I said, I'll drive the rest of it. I think we were about three hours from Calais. 
I said, I'll drive the rest. I said, you get some kit. You had in the morning. He said, I'm sure. So we did the, like, 70 mile an hour on the motorway swap over. You know, the one where you put it, <laughs> yeah. you put it in neutral and the driver stands up and the other guy slides in behind you. Yeah, like, <laughs> you must have done it in five. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, if you've been in the speed of van, it's been done. Yeah. And um, so then Sean's, like, he's nodding off in the passenger seat. So I've gone, dude, when are you get on the bed with Doyle, our bed in our van was massive. It was, it was almost like a double. It was like a three-quarter bed. Yeah. Why did he get on the bed with Doyle? And he was like, ah, oh, I'll be all right. Then he's done off. I'm going, mate, go on. You sure you'll be all right? And I was like, yeah, mate. I said, there's only two hours to call I'll, I'll piss it, you know, no problem. Yeah. So <laughs> if you heard Sean telling the story, it's the best I'd say. He climbs, he climbs over Scott on the, on the three-seater. Yeah. And he climbs up onto the bed. And he said, I got on the bed. And he said, I went, move over, Glenn. Glenn? And he said it was like he was searching for a 50 pence. He was looking like in the corners <laughs> and that. And then he said, I use, Abby! Stop the van! And I'm like, look at him. Like, he's bright red. He's going, stop the van! Stop the van! There's no daily! Oh, <laughs> right. my God. I pulled up on the hard shoulder of the motorway in, in Belgium, right? Yeah. Scott, Sean got back down. Scott sat up for the face eight, and the three of us sat and laughed for about 20 minutes on the God ride. It was like, Doily's gone. Where the <laughs> is Doily? <laughs> we didn't have a clue. He was there. he was just not there, right? So there's no way we could go back or anything. So we yeah. just we kept going. So basically, what had happened, right, was um, after I'd got up in the service station and said I'm going to the toilet, lobbed him the keys. Um, Doily had got up next and gone. I'm going back to the van lads, uh, and, and I think uh, Sean had said, I'll just stick the keys in the ignition then. So he'd gone out, he got into the van, right, stuck the keys in the ignition, and then he had a brainwave of going to the phone box just over the way to call his missus in England, right? <laughs> so he gets to the van, keys in the ignition, think no, he's on the bed. Yeah, apparently, as we were driving past, he was going, oh, no, they're moving. And his, apparently his missus said to him, Oh, don't worry, they'll just be filling up with fuel. Oh, no. How the fuck would she know what we were doing? <laughs> so, but the funniest thing was, we didn't know whether we'd lost him there or when we stopped for fuel three hours later. Oh, we just God. didn't have a clue. No mobiles or anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then the, on the Saturday, right, when we got yeah. to Bradford for the league meeting, yeah. we were in the pit, so me and Sean were part next to each other anyway, right, and there comes Doily walking down the hill, and I'm going to Sean, here comes Doily, do you think he's going to be all right? And I was like, I don't think he's going to be alright. I think he's going to be very happy at all. <laughs> yeah. right Sean's gone, all right, Glenn, how's it going? <laughs> Just the simplest thing. And what he said, you really don't want to know. Oh, I man. really can't reply. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and in the Sun newspaper, it come up like as if we were the dozy ones who'd left him. <laughs> what a freaking imbecile put your keys in the ignition and then leave the vehicle. That's mental. That is it, it Apparently it happened with Mark and Norrie as well, you know. How long did he get along back? How long was it until he got back? Oh, he had to, he, he like, he, 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 he like hitchhiked, got a bus, a train, oh. uh, and he got, he managed to get back to some port in Belgium, and get on a ferry, <laughs> and Alan Am had to turn up at, at wherever it was in England where the, yeah, yeah. the ferry was getting to with all his documents and stuff. <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, uh, if you, if you ever think of Mark, apparently that happened with Mark and Norrie, but they, they had mobiles, so they managed to sort it out. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But, uh, but, uh, it, <laughs> so easy to do. <laughs> Apparently it is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do, do, do the lad leave pal in Germany. Get in there. Me and Sean made the news. That's brilliant. <laughs> oh god. So he give you a bit of a he give you some swear words and that, I guess. He give us a bit of stick, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah not not that we were even bothered like no, no. <laughs> in the slightest. <laughs> That's brilliant. Great story. <laughs> Okay, yeah, next one I got. Your dad, Brian, was a former, obviously, spear rider too. Then he ran uh, Red Car as well, wasn't it? Yes, he did, yeah. Yeah. What New, he ran Newcastle as well for yeah, a while. Was it to what? do with uh, Middlesbrough as well? Was it Middlesbrough? No, he, he, was, he, he was the team manager of your Middlesbrough. Yeah. yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. Well, for half of my first season, he was a team manager, and he quit because certain members of the team were, who uh, shall remain nameless, were saying that he was, I was getting favouritism. But at the end of the day, I was in reserve and I was banging double figures everywhere. You know what I mean? You've got, yeah, yeah. you, you got to have six or seven miles everywhere you go. You know yeah, I mean? sure, yeah, you make the most of it. So yeah. he, he, he quit. He said, fuck it, I don't need that shit. And um, <laughs> I'll just, he just come with me after that. <laughs> okay, okay. 
What but yeah, he, what influence yeah. was he on your career anyway? That's what I was getting. Oh, at. he was he was he was massive. He was the yeah. number one, the absolute number one influence on my career. You know, um, with my dad, um, you know, he he worked for everything he got. You know, he started by riding trials first, and then and then he, he progressed to doing what was what across what was called scrambles back in the day. Scrambles. Then then he went to grass track, and he didn't actually start riding speed until he was twenty nine. So he, uh, I think I always think he sort of felt like he'd missed the boat a little bit. So yeah. with me, with me, that was like him fulfilling what he missed with me. So he pushed me really hard. But you know what? I, I I didn't mind that because you know that's what I wanted as well. You know, I used to see Johnny Grassback and that like some father who was like screaming at his kid and that because his father wanted him to be the best of the best of the best. But you could just tell the kid wasn't even interested. You know. Yeah. So although although he was fairly hard on me, um, you know, it was it was absolutely fine because that's what I wanted as well. Um, way, yeah. yeah. Was he? Uh, he must have been mega proud of you. Obviously, your world final. Oh, and... I think so. Yeah, he's never actually told me because he's uh-huh. old school. No, he's old school. He's old school. You know? Yeah, you can't tell yeah, people yeah, feelings yeah. and that. No, yeah. no, oh no, no, no. <laughs> you know, like yeah, you know, yeah. it's like. But um, mm. I'm sure he was. I'm sure he was. Yeah. I'm sure he is. <laughs> Uh, right, next one I got. What would you consider were your biggest strengths as a spear rider, and were there any weaknesses you feel that you had? Hmm. Um, I think my biggest strength probably was my uh, was my, my mental capability. You know, um, I seemed to be able to raise my game. Hmm. The more pressure there was on, um, I could uh, I managed to um, um, you know work out a system that that where I could use use it. As my um, advantage, you know, a lot, a lot of riders get defeated by nerves or by self doubt or by everything. You know, it's one thing I never had. I always had a like stone belief, you know. And um, yeah, I, I seemed to be able to. The, the more pressure that was on, the more I seemed to be able to focus, focus it towards a, a, a greater goal, should we say? Um, yeah, I think that was definitely my uh, my number one attribute. Um, as for the, the opposite side, uh, oh, I don't know. It's difficult to say. Um, it was weird because the, all going up, my, all my dreams, all all I, what I ever wanted to do was be the world champion, and achieving it at such a young age um, mm. was was difficult in a way that it it made me lack slight sort of motivation in a way. If you can mm. understand that, just a little bit. Um, yeah. You know, I never, I, ne- I never, I never, when I was growing up, I never decided that I wanted to be the the best speed rider ever or anything like that. All I mm. wanted to do was be the world champion. Yeah. Um, and I think that probably um, that probably um, didn't help me much, you know, uh, for a few years after that. Uh, I mean, if you think you look at my, my major form, I didn't really pick back up again until sort of Pearl, going back to Pearl in 99 and getting back in the England set up and, and, and doing well there. So, um, yeah, probably spent a few years um, sort of bumbling about Trying to um, get some motivation, if if, if you like. Um, yeah, I know, it's your goals, di- really. I know it's difficult for people to believe, but yeah, mm, it's get what you're it's um, mm. yeah. yeah. Get what you're saying. Probably uh, that, yeah. Well, I'm thinking about it as well. I did think yeah. of this earlier when you mentioned the '81 uh, Wembley final, watching Bruce uh-huh. win and all that. Yeah. Obviously, I knew I know that was the last one there, and I know that I, I've got the DVD of it because uh, yeah. I was a bit young then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and. Uh, I see it as a mental atmosphere, obviously, and amazing oh, and everything. So, as a youngster then, when you was watching that, could you have ever sort of believed it? Obviously, that you was going to be world. Oh champion? God, absolutely, hundred percent. Yeah. So well, you had that belief well, that you were. Well, you yeah, were, right, yeah. Right, right, right from ever since I can remember. I, yeah. I, I used to lay in bed on a night um, doing a thing that if you pay good money and go and see a spot psychologist now, one of the things yeah. they'll teach you about is visualization. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I used to do that stuff on my own when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. Dreaming. You know, and um, yeah, dreaming exactly. Um, and when I walked up the up the stairs and into the parapet for the for the world final in '81, and a wall of sound just hit me and was just like, "Wow, this is this is it! Like this is what I want," you know. And um, although all through my career I rode in some front of some massive crowds, uh, um, and it's weird because <laughs> when you're in the zone, you don't even really really notice the crowd, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, but, like what you're saying about your mental strength, I think anyone that won them one-off world finals, you had to surely have that because some of the riders were nervous. And... Yeah, God, yeah. Yeah, massive, yeah. I mean, massive, you, you, know, massive, you, you, you think yourself, you, 
your your whole season was was yeah was, one meeting, five rounds, yeah, yeah yeah your whole season was focused towards that one meeting and uh, you know if you messed it up that you messed it up and that was it so, so it made sense you needed that mental strength yeah I think so I I always seem to be able to to uh, to to focus yeah to focus that if you're like um, you know if the lad says oh, I'm really nervous you know mm-hmm. it's like um, Nerves are uh, being nervous is like a negative, negative energy. Yeah, whereas, yeah, yeah, kind of whereas yeah. if you can take that energy and manage to turn it around in your brain and, and use it as a positive energy, then then you go far, you know. Yeah. Very good. Uh, next one I got. You uh, won the British final twice. Is that right? I did. Yeah. Yeah. What do you remember about them, and what did that mean to you? Oh, the first one, I remember pretty much a lot of it. You know, I, I won it with maximum and. Um, Obviously, I hadn't long come back from um, the latest of my bands, um, and I, I had the feeling that, you know, Speedway, the, the powers that be, wanted me out of the sport for good. Mm. And, um, you know, sort of win that so soon after was was, was really special. It was really yeah. special. Yeah. The yeah. second one, the second one, I think the biggest thing I remember about the second one is effing me last ride up and end up with 13, having to have a runoff with Martin Duggard. Yeah, uh, I but I managed. I managed to win the toss and take the inside, which was good. And as we got to the turn, he was like, he was like half half a wheel behind me, and he was committed. And I knew I just had to go a couple of yards extra and put him over the over the camber, and I was off, and that was sort of done, you know. So yeah, yeah it was all good. But, yeah, uh, I, I like. I love the fact we can still watch them on YouTube as well. Yeah, I've yeah, seen, yeah. Gone back and had a look at them. They're really cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, British final on yeah, a Sunday but, afternoon at Coventry yeah, with ten thousand people yeah. there. Mega, and like you know, I, you might call me old fashioned, you might call me uh, whatever you want, but you know, when you see it, uh, you know, on a Monday night at Wolverhampton with like 3,000 people, it's just not the same, it really isn't. And uh, so, uh, at least I can say I was in that fantastic era where they were, where the meetings yeah. were on, and and then I managed to win a couple, so yeah, Amazing. all really good, good. really good. Um, what do you feel personally were your best achievements in Speedway overall? Obviously, we know about your world final work in general. Um, probably, probably just um, you know, I never actually won that many team honours for the teams I voted for. You know, I won the league with Bradford in eighty seven, uh, in ninety seven, mm. and I won the uh, uh, Swedish elite league with Masana in in two thousand. Mm. Um, uh, quite a few knockout cups on that. Bradford, we were knockout cup kings in the early nineties. Um, but probably England appearances, you know. Mm-hmm. I think as a sportsman, or, or anything, to, to, the, the biggest highlight of his career must have to be pulling on an England mm-hmm. shirt, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, there's only one thing for me that beats that is they're pulling on an England shirt and then putting on the armband. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, yeah. I had the, I managed to have the, have the, have the honour of, of doing that for, I don't know how many times I was in the camp, but I think I rode uh, over 70 times for England. And I probably was captain at least fifty percent of those, I would think. So, mm. yeah, you know, and it's just a shame that uh, the the World Cup at Pro, um, mm. which we should have won, you know, mm. um, missed out in the World Pairs in '92 and a run off to Greg, got and he got silver. Um, mm. I think I've got two golds, uh, two or three silvers, and a couple of bronzes, so FIM medals. So yeah, I'm really proud of all of them, you know. Yeah, that's nice. Um, especially the ones where it was like pairs or team, you know. Yeah, we'll have to get that, out, get them out in the memorabilia night. <laughs> yeah, mate, no bother. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, you won a lot uh, as an individual as a rider, mm-hmm. um, and you obviously won some team things as you just mentioned. Did you, did you prefer to, did you enjoy more to be an individual, or did you enjoy as much being part of a team as well? Or did um, you have a preference? Oh, part, being part of a team without a doubt is. is... Mm-hmm. You know, completely different. They're completely yeah, different. Yeah. Completely different, and and you have to have a completely different mindset. Um, but riding with teams is just great. You know, even even going back being team actually with Cov and and Berwick and that, it's just being with the lads and having the crack and, and you know, it, it, you just can't beat it. And you know, you, I think you find a lot of a lot of people, ex sports people who, 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 you know. Finish playing football, finish doing whatever, and and they actually struggle to find it really difficult to 
to readjust to normal life because you you be just being with the lads all the time, just having a laugh and a crack and a yes, you know a Mickey taking and and, and <laughs> uh, you know Bam, and right. and yeah, you know, certainly it's speedway. You know, you 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 lose as a team, but you win as a team. And when you win, it's it's mega. You know. Yeah, yeah. great time. Okay, uh, next one I got here. This will be interesting. <laughs> Which riders would you say that you disliked or you didn't enjoy racing against them, and why? Okay. Um, mm. Dislike that, I wouldn't really say that. I didn't dislike. Is there any guys who always seem to be, if you're ever out on the track, you always seem to come together? or Not really, no. Uh, uh, no, and you know what, like. That's good. My whole career, I, I was a massive believer in you, you ride hard, but you ride fair, you know. Yeah. And if someone, if you're riding the board, if someone's got the kahunas to come around you, right? don't stick them in the fence. Mm. You know what I mean? Because. It's, it's, it could be a long career, and, and you know, okay, if it's a world final or a, or, a, or a Grand Prix final or it's a World Cup final and you're riding for England, totally different story. But in league racing, I, I always like to ride hard but fair. And, um, you know, the riders who, who cross that line are the mm. ones that, you know, don't particularly like. Tell you a funny story mm. when, when I started doing Swedish League regular. Um, yeah. It, it was pre um, Ryan Air days and that, right? So you, yeah. we, we all rode with Scandinav- Scandinavian Airlines. So mm. you'd fly from Manchester or Heathrow or wherever to Copenhagen. Yeah. And then you'd go from Copenhagen on a little Fokker T prop. <laughs> yeah. You'd land in like Orobro or some little town in Sweden. Jesus. And you'd only be like an hour away from the track, which is yeah. perfect. Yeah, yeah. But what you did after about six meetings of going with SAS, you got a silver card, okay. which gave you 10 kilos extra, blah, blah. And then by the second season, you you would have a goal card. On a goal card, meant you could take like two engines with you if you wanted in a kit bag, but you also got access to the VIP lounges. Okay. So on a Wednesday morning, <laughs> all the speed riders who were going back to England, which was a lot in them days because yeah. nearly everybody was based in yeah. England, yeah, yeah, would fly from all these little airports at like six o'clock in the morning and stuff back mm-hmm. to Copenhagen. And then everyone, so I would, you could walk into the, the VIP lounge, SAS in Copenhagen back then on a Wednesday morning, and there'd be anywhere from 10 to, to, to 20 riders all sat around and thing. And I, I always remember if I'd walked in, if Nicky was there, like when we got the pile, I'd go, all right, Nicky, who did you knock off last night then? <laughs> <laughs> did he like that? <laughs> Yeah, he used to like it. Nicky would just mind. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he, yeah. Away from the track, he's not a bad lad. He's yeah, a bit yeah. of banner. Um, yeah. I wouldn't like to explain what he is when he's at a track, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I certainly think like the the, the Grand Prix series will be poorer without him. There's no yeah. doubt about that. Was there guys? Was there guys back then that everyone sort of would, you know, like yeah. mentally keep aware of that you know that they're going to go mean, over the line? I mean, I mean, Gollub when he first come on the scene, yeah, you know. Yeah. Jesus, when he yeah. first come on the scene, um he was really, really bad until the boys he signed him out. Yeah, pretty much. And, 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 sorted, and yeah. literally yeah, literally after then he just seemed yeah. to see the you know, I think i I watch people like that and I think to myself, if you concentrated on your own race, yeah. Instead of so trying bad, to yeah. stick the other person in the fence, you'd go faster than you're going. But uh, yeah. Um yeah he he was he was pretty wild when he yeah, first he came crazy, up. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, over the years there's been ones. I mean, when I when I first started doing Polish league, every team had like a chopper, okay. you know, like a chopper Anderson or a chopper yeah. chopper chopper, chopper ski, yeah, chopper. ski. Yeah, <laughs> literally every team had a rider whose sole purpose was to try and ram another rider off the track. Jesus. Honestly, Sacri- sacrifice himself. Yeah, like yeah, 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 and um, <laughs> and, uh, and, that, and you have to you have to be careful out there. <laughs> I would, ask, I would always, I would always, I would ask Peter Swift, whoever was one of the Polish fans who I had to look out for on the other team, like you know. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool, fair enough. Um, next one I got. If you, uh, who would you say were the three best riders that you ever competed against in your career? If you had to say three riders, competed against, or, yeah, or, yeah. or, or, or have seen, uh, competed against. But I'll say both if you think. Competed against. Competed against. Uh, certainly, Per Johnson. Yeah. Um, competed against. Oh, God, that's a hard question. A really hard question. Oh, very, yeah. Um, Interesting, man. Probably Henker, maybe. Henker Gustafsson, yeah. Um, um, and believe it or not, Andrew Silva. Yeah. Um, had an amazing amount of talent, natural talent. Uh, yeah. Screedy, Screedy as well. I don't know that's far, but. Yeah. 
Um, without a doubt, in my humble opinion, the most yeah. talented speed rider I've ever seen is Darcy Ward. With Darcy Ward. Darcy Ward, yeah. Darcy Ward, yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. Got to see him at Swindon as well in his late last. Yeah. Yes, when well, he was fit and wow. he came to Coventry. I think he, he he only had four rides and he had like he was like eleven straight in front, twelve point maximum, and just off he went. And <laughs> it's such a crying shame what what happened uh, to him. It really is, you know, because that kid had the world in front of him, and you know, I've ended up pretty mangled from speedway. But you know, at least I, at least I managed to have my career mm. before I got injured. You know, and, and whereas he he had everything in front of him, and oh, um, that's such a shame. Shocking, yeah, but yeah, without without a doubt, without a doubt, Darcy. I have, I have got hold of him as well, and he said he's going to speak to me, so that'd be cool. Excellent, excellent. Uh, you could you can tell said... him about you can tell him I said that then. Yeah, he said he was the best ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, so I didn't. I was going to go speak to you about it off air before we come on, but as I say about it now, so obviously you got that uh, brace so support thing all on your arm, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Arm. So that was still. So that was from that. I remember you had the nerve damage when it was the uh, yeah, crash around the car. Still, I've got it. Well, yeah. I broke. I broke every lip, every rib on my left hand side. Yeah. My sternum, my collarbone, my shoulder blade, and my arm in two places. Okay. But um, the they they weren't the problem. The problem was um, the nerves that control your oh. movement of your arm. They go or into into five main ones at the top, and then they go underneath your collarbone, yeah. round the back, and then they plug into your spine. And out of the five main ones that are plugged into your spinal cord, I ripped the bottom three out. So I've had uh, a few operations and stuff to try and um, sort it out, but it, it's pretty basically my left arm don't work. You know, that's what it is. It's uh, it, the, the actual name of it is called a brachial plexus paralysis. So the group of nerves that control the movement of your arm are called your brachial plexus nerves. And uh, yeah, so so that's what I've got. Did you uh, know? Did you know when you crashed that it was obviously? Bad? Um, I knew it was bad. Yeah, yeah. I, knew, I knew it was bad. But like, I also had a had a had a slight bleed on the brain, so I was do lally as well, and they were putting me full of drugs, and yeah, yeah. I basically didn't know what was going on. It yeah. was awful. But uh, yeah. we 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 know the dangers when we sling our legs over them machines, unfortunately, and um, that is the, that is a one shot inside the speedway that you know that happens and. Unfortunately, it's it's the nature of the beast. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you could give advice to any youngster who wants to be a pro speedway rider, what would it be? It would be this. Go on. Right. Yeah. When you are in the pits at any given speedway meet, and every single man and his dog in there has an opinion mm. on how you should what you should do to be able to ride speedway fast. Um, and they're obviously not all right. In fact, most of them are wrong. <laughs> um, so the advice I give to youngster is, is, is um, you know, be polite and listen to people. But then, you know, you need to you need to decide who you're going to listen to, mm-hmm. and who you're going to follow, and who you're going to take advice from. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you can have like one sort of ex rider or whatever, then um, you know, and you trust them, then then go down that way, and and everything else, just listen. Nod, say yes, and uh, let it go in one ear and out the other because, um, for sure, the amount of young riders I see who just heads are just farting because there's just that many people telling them that many different things, and you know, yeah, yeah, that would be the, that would be my biggest advice. Decide who you're going to listen to, and then listen to them. Interesting, like that. Very good. Interesting. Uh, what other sports? Is there any other sports you enjoy doing or watching? Well, watching. Yeah, well, yeah. I used to love playing football. Um, yeah. watching, I still love watching football. Um, yeah. Even even right up until when I crashed, I was playing five a side at least once a week. Um, and uh, I love to go around the golf. Uh, funny enough, I've actually recently been to the driving range and um, and whacked a few with one arm, and it, it wasn't actually too bad. So um, <laughs> uh, I'm thinking of going for the rounds at some at some stage and uh, seeing how that goes. But uh, yeah. there's quite a few few one arm golfers around, so. Is there Why a not? team, what team, or teams you follow in football? Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough. The mighty Borough, of course. You know, I'm a massive believer in you support the you support the club from where from where you're from. Exactly no that. Matter, I mean, no matter exactly what, that. No matter what league they're in or where exactly they're going, or what they're doing, yeah. you're the same. Yep, Swindon. Yeah. Good lad. Hey. Boom. Boom. Yeah. 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 You get especially at pool. 
pool <laughs> is full of Man United, Liverpool and Apple. <laughs> yeah. and Chelsea supporters. It's unbelievable. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's just that, isn't it? Yeah. Just, one, just one league too, so we're not too bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, our league too, all right, yeah. <laughs> you want, you're going up to League One then? League One next season. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. So if you if you do well in that, you'll be playing better the year after. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Nah, it's good. I know I know a few people down at, down at the yeah. Borough and that, and it's good. Yeah. They have me, they have they have three rooms, yeah. three like VIP rooms, uh, and a different or ex player doing each room, and they have guests each week. And, and I've done all three of them. Uh, it's great. They have you down and like. So it's a take, nice old stadium. Well. Yeah, it's one of them. It's one of them modern ones. You know, like. Like they have everywhere. You must have loved them seasons that you had. Uh, was it? Um, I remember oh, wow. seasons of yeah. uh, Gian- Janino, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Emerson, yeah. Merson, and yeah. Gaza. Gaza. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, and then no. we and then we had Baduka and um, Hasselbank. Yeah, Jesus. together. Yeah, yeah it's been, wasn't it? well, we had some right players. And you, you know did, what? Yeah. When 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 we when we got to the UEFA Cup final, we were fucking riding the Kings Lane, weren't we? Yeah. We had a little radio in the pits trying to listen to it in that between races. It was. <laughs> Dog shit, but uh, yeah, uh, we used to uh, one of the one of the songs was like on the European nights, just a small town in Europe, <laughs> just a small town in Europe. <laughs> great, great days. Yeah, they were. You had some bloody good players, like yourself. Oh, we've had some amazing players. Yeah, I remember, I remember them. That was really, mm. really good. Mm. Uh, next one I got is what? Oh God! Right, we phones, down, we phones down to ten percent. So oh shit. I mean, headphones are stuck into me charger port. <laughs> okay. So um, keep going for a bit, and then we'll decide we might have to plug it in or something. All right, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Go on. Uh, next, what... next one was a bit iffy, was it? Yeah, wow. What... <laughs> Ask me what... anything, Lee. Like, I'll tell yeah, you. I, will, I'll yeah. you that, I, know, I know you'd tell me straight anyway. What things would you change in British Speedway if you could going forward? Um, I would sack every single referee instantly on the spot. <laughs> and get some of X riders mm-hmm. who actually yeah. have, an, you know, they don't have to have ridden to any particular level. Just have basic understanding of things yeah. like momentum and trajectory and wheel spin and spatial awareness and all these things that the referees have no clue about because basically they were just fans on the terraces. Yeah. Uh, and then one day they went, "Hey, I want to be." If a... we, uh, a if we, if we, if we learn to be a referee, we get paid to go on what speedway. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, it's ridiculous. Um, the, the the whole of British Speedway, you know, it, it needs changing from top to bottom. Mm, there's the not even... Thing. There's it's not... Oh, there's not, how long has that been going on for? Uh, uh, well, it's all because it's fucking too tight to buy a two-minute clock. <laughs> yeah. You buy a two-minute clock, right? Then the riders can do Everyone whatever, they, whatever they, yeah. they want. If they want to go for a shit, as long as they're back at the tapes by the time it's zero, it doesn't matter. But no, everyone can see it as well. We're the only, the only country in the world that doesn't have a two minute clock. Yeah, I see that mentioned somewhere. Because apparently like somebody, somebody stood up at one of the meetings and said, Oh, they're about five on the piece of them clocks. And everyone went, Oh, fuck that with all them. I mean, <laughs> your iPhone has a clock countdown clock on it. It wouldn't, <laughs> yeah. it wouldn't even need to be connected to the ref, would it? You just have a block sat in the center green. And when it's so only two minutes, presses the button. Because yeah. no one knows where you stand half the time of that. It's it? ridiculous, mate. Yeah, and that's that's pretty speedway from top to bottom, mate. It really is. It's uh, it's it's wrong. It's uh, I best not say too much, eh? In case it becomes right. slanderous, but yeah, yeah it's okay. it, it needs a, it needs a complete overhaul from top to bottom. What mm. it needs is one person in charge. Is what it needs. Mm. Because as long as each promoter has their own say, uh, and they only ever bothered about their little piece of the pie. Mm. Uh, and they want, then they all need to take a step back and look at the whole pie, you know. The whole pie at the moment is rotten. Yeah, not good. I mean, what happened, I mean, what happened with the 250 grand we allegedly spent on freaking GTRs? Nobody's, nobody say, Where's that money? Yeah, exactly. imagine how much TV advertising that could have added. Mm. Exactly that. A lot of money. Yeah, yeah why, would, why, why, why should people who run a sport even get involved in the nuts and bolts of it? They shouldn't. There's only one reason. There's only one reason. There can only be one reason. Because they heard that they could do all season without being serviced, so that all oh, the riders cost me down. Mm. We'll be able to pay them less money. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the only reason, isn't it? Yeah, it's the yeah, only reason it can be late. And like, if you want to bring somebody who argue with me different, I'll have an argument with them. Not a problem. <laughs> Love that. Is your phone all right? Right, I'm just looking now. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's on. It's on seven percent, mate. Ooh. So we're, we're all right for a bit. All right. 
Uh, right, where are we? Uh, you lo- you raced for a lot of British League clubs. Um, riding for which club and period did you most enjoy and why? Uh, probably the, the four and a half years I spent in pool. Yeah. Um, obviously, the, the 10 years at Bradford were great, um, you know, culminating with a league win and it was my favourite track and all that. But, um, you know, going to pool was when, when I'd sort of hit a bit of a bit of a sticky sort of period. I went to Eastbourne, hoping for great things, thinking it would be a good home track to have and I could get used to it. But I just struggled to get used to it. And um, being last man in, I was obviously first man out. And, um, you know, at that stage, I was thinking, what the hell? But, uh, you know, Paul came straight along and signed me up for the rest of the season. And literally, just f- from the first meeting, I just, just, just loved it, you know. Um, and that was the year when Matt's uh, company's hair arena, the uh, hairdressing chops, he was the main sponsor, and I got quite friendly with him. And then all, all, over the winters, when him, him and uh, him and Mike Gordon bought the club, um, and he installed me as captain and Midlow's team manager, and, and the, the rest this is history. And although I never managed to win things with Paul, um, got very close in '99, like to the last race of the last meeting of the season. Um, you know, I just had such fun down there. It's a fantastic mm-hmm. part of the country. You know, the pe- people are nice, and you know, good sponsors down there. Um, and it was just, it was just great. Yeah, and, uh, and you had that like, inside dial, didn't you? Yeah, everyone oh, used to Paul. think. Yeah, everyone was oh, <laughs> king of the curb, and like, yeah, yeah. they didn't realise that I spent ten years at Bradford bouncing off the fence. And the only oh, reason, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. The that's only reason I, mean, yeah. I used to ride around the curb at Paul because that was the fastest way on the track. Yeah, exactly that. I just <laughs> remember you had it. Well, it, well, it was slick. It was concrete yeah. slick back then, yeah. and it was. Get the yeah. white, get the front wheel over the white line. Front wheel, yeah. yeah, especially on one and two, you could yeah, get exactly half, your, half your bike on it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, that. Funny, Tony McCarthy used to like used to hate that, and he used to say, "I can't believe I can't, he couldn't do it." Mm. And I said, "You could do it." He said, "No, no I, can't, I can't do it, honestly." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "I'll teach you one day, Tony." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, teach you, mate. Uh, one of them I had was you were obviously close. You mentioned it earlier, uh, close to winning the World Cup, uh, Team GB, two thousand and four yeah. at Paul. What yeah. do you remember about that night? Oh, I remember pretty much everything about it, you know. Mm. Uh, I remember Scotty Nichols shutting off because there was a freaking camera oh, in the my crowd. God, I remember that, yeah. Jesus. I remember that race I had with uh, Master and Parler, which was yeah, phenomenal. Was uh, you know, I remember just the team spirit and, um, you know, with Lee and Floppy and and and, and Neo and everybody. And, um, you know, uh, you know, do you know our biggest, our biggest disappointment, looking back of all that? Is that Lee Richardson's kids got deprived of an extra gold medal that they should have had of his? Yeah. yeah. And that's all I can say. What did you think about the Hans Anderson thing and all that? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can't really say. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. the Swedes of the Danes friggin' hate each other. So, no, like, that's, don't get. So, uh, you know, I, if I start saying things now, I'm going to get into trouble. So, I best just not say anything. Um, <laughs> Like, all I can say is that he, Lee Richardson's kids were cheated out of an extra gold medal. Yeah, shit, man. Mm. Real bad. Yeah, let's leave that there, then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, can you tell everyone what you're up to now? What, right now? Or, like, in general now? Oh, I know what you're doing. <laughs> in, gen- in general, yeah. Uh, I've not been doing anything, to be honest. I, um, mm. The last thing I did was took a van out to um, to France for Matt Ford. Yeah. He uh, he has a um, chateau thing, right? Yeah, he's, yeah, to his chateau, he has a um, that, yeah. he has a um, um, like a crew cab transporter, you know, with the extra okay. seats in, oh, right. so that when people are coming over, he can go to the airport and pick them up oh, and that. Yeah, yeah. But he has it from England, he, from rent truck, by the way, you know, rent truck. Okay, yeah, rent truck. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So when we went out there in March, we obviously went out as the pool team because I was supposed to be um, a joint team manager with Neil. So we went out to about Chateau. Um, this is before COVID, about a week before COVID kicked in, um, for a bit of team bonding sort of thing, you know. And um, I was when I was in the in the front of the van with Matt, and I noticed it was all automatic. You see, because obviously I could still drive automatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I said, oh, I said, oh, I could drive this, and he went, you know what? He said, I need to, I need to get this one back. He said, he, he, you only have them for a year, then he sold them. <clears throat> so basically, we went. Um, uh, went and picked a van up from uh, Rochdale. It had six mile on it. 
Yeah, with uh, yeah, one of them transporters nice. with with the extra seats in and that, yeah. and we drove it we drove it down to uh, Folkestone, got on the channel tunnel, and then drove it down to France. Down to, it's not right at the south of France, but it's quite down three quarters away. Yeah. Drove it down there and then br- brought the old one back. Well, I stayed for a few days and that, and it was lovely because it was red hot. It was like thirty degrees and nice. um, he's got a swimming pool and all that, so that was uh, pretty nice. Um, yeah, see and then, then brought the last one. That's about the last thing I've done, to be honest. Yeah, I've. Um, What's the plans in general then for when things are normal? Ah, uh, oh, well, the plan is uh, hopefully, uh, the, hopefully Matt will keep the same team and team managers for next year, mm-hmm. and um, we do that, you know. Um, yeah. uh, uh, when Matt called me up to ask me about it, obviously we've dropping down the league. Mm-hmm. Um, Neil is going to struggle to be doing like Glasgow and Edinburgh, a place like that, you know, because yeah, his dad's yeah, his, his, his dad's quite ill as well, oh, you know, okay, so. I didn't know that. So Matt was like, uh, I'm going to need another team manager. To, and I just went, yeah, I'll do it. And he was like, well, I haven't told you any details or we haven't discussed money or anything like that. I said, I don't care, I'll do it. And I, you know what? I've been mean, sat there for the last couple of years twiddling my thumbs. Mm. And like, I watch things on TV, Speedway and that, and I see people like, who, who've got, who have, I have more, more knowledge in my little finger than they have in the whole body <laughs> of Speedway. In, yeah. position, in positions of, of like, a job in Speedway, you know, yeah, yeah. and and the fact that Matt right could have basically asked anyone on anyone in the country or on the planet to be his joint team manager with Neil, and they would have jumped at the chance. But he asked me, and that was that was a massive thing for me, you know. I didn't sat there doing that, and for Matt to think of me first and foremost like that, I was just like, yeah, I'll do it. Um, as for long term, I don't know really. Um, I. I'm a very open-minded person, you know. I don't stress too much about things, and I try to go with the floor and just um, see what's going to happen. Uh, who knows, you know? Uh, could end up living abroad, you know, or anything. I really don't know. I'm just sort of just bumbling along at the moment. And once I get to 55, I'll be all right because, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, any shout-outs you want to make, Javi, before we go, before your phone dies? Shout-outs. Um, That's what we got. What have we got? What have we got? About <laughs> two minutes, two minutes, right? Yeah, shout out, big shout out to my friend Andrew Silver, who's not yes. been too well. Uh, yeah. um, shout out to Christina, <laughs> Adam, um, all the boys in the arm, uh, my mum and dad, and uh, my two beautiful girls, Holly and Erin. Nice way to finish. Well, uh, that was an absolute pleasure, mate, to speak to you. What a uh, man my, you are. My, my pleasure completely. I really oh, enjoyed it, What an absolute it, legend you are. Yeah, absolute you know, legend. No drama, man. Oh, on, a, sure, on and off the track. I'm sure I'll see you at Swindon before long. Yeah, well, that'd be cool. I'd have to meet in person. That'd be yeah, good. Yeah, man, that'd be great. I really appreciate it, Javi. And I'll hey, no sort you out when I've sorted out. Yeah, put it send, out there. send us a couple of links from the other ones. I send will do that. The Per Janssen one. No. All right. Yes, I'm going to be doing that soon. And I'll send Wicked. you the Pennell one. Wicked, man. All right. Top man. Appreciate it. Take it easy. Cheers, mate. mate. Thanks a lot.